Good morning, and it is a chilly one. It's about negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. We're standing on a frozen river right now, and we're headed to a glacier. We've never been here before. I think it's about a 10 mile ride in. We have one of the most beautiful days ever. Cold, but beautiful. We're gonna head out, see if we can get there. Well, we made it to Spencer Glacier. I don't know if it took us about an hour. It's definitely 10 or so miles out here and it is magnificent, absolutely magnificent. It's a little bit of a cloudy day and that's usually why the glaciers look a little more blue, but I do believe that this particular glacier is always this blue, so really, really beautiful. And I'm not making a phone call. I just, we had to go really fast across this lake there was some overflow that froze up and this is a little hand warmer that I'm using to heat my face. The neat thing about this glacier is that you can actually ride up in there or maybe we'll walk if we don't feel safe. You can get right up at the face of the glacier and go in those little crevasses, I guess you'd say. And that's not always that common because sometimes that water is moving and it'll be open, but this one, it's usually pretty safe to get close up there. Pretty cool. Hello! Do you see the face? Do you see the face right there? I kinda do, yeah. What? The nose? And the eyes? Hey, yeah. Look, there's a cool KO on this one too. I think that's the one people walk down. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. I scared myself. Look, you can walk like in there. If you're brave. This glacier is crazy. It's so much bigger than the than I thought it was gonna be. We saw pictures of it, but this is just insane. The blue color, and we're like right up in it. And the trail goes around. 
and you can go even further in it. So I think that's where we're headed. It's really cool out here. Yeah, it's making noise. Well, I had hoped to be able to actually go into the glacier, but I don't think we're gonna be able to. Not that many people have been out here. It's early season and I'm, I'm not gonna walk where someone hasn't already walked. I just don't do that kind of funny business here in Alaska. And we're actually on a lake right now. I didn't mention that. If you saw these big bergs when you came in, those are floating in the lake. Um, they're frozen now, so it's nice and solid. But there's still some open areas and it's still pretty sketchy. So it's a really magnificent glacier. It's probably the coolest one we have ever been to, but there's just no one else out here today. So we've got to be really careful what we do. The baby blue. You know, is that crows following us? We made it over to kind of the edge of the lake, I guess this would be. And the blue part we were by earlier, that's like the face of the glacier. So that's just one part of it. The glacier actually goes just way back in that valley. These glaciers are absolutely massive. And this is, uh, I'm pretty sure this is, well, we've been inside one, but this is really close we are to this glacier. And it's just insane how big these things are. This one's really blue too. It's a really cool glacier. And we picked a cold day to come out here. It was negative 15 at the truck and I'm sure it's colder out here because we're in this valley on a lake and both of our feet are numb. It's a cold day out here. We made a friend. <laughs> There's a raven out here, middle of nowhere. And this raven's out here. He's looking for food, I'm pretty sure. I got some bread. Let's see if we can get him to eat it. Eric, look, he's collecting all of them. <laughs> he's, he's a scavenger. We were coming around this corner and we noticed on the way in, there's like some ice broke and it must have broken the water. And there's just a whole bunch of chunky ice around here and it's pretty sketchy. There's a crack in the ice over here. So we're not gonna hang out here too long and this is the kind of stuff we wouldn't want to be here for when it happened. Thankfully we weren't for this one. Well I think we have done about all we can do at the glacier. We've walked the perimeter and we are both surprisingly a little bit cold. Even though we we're very well prepared, I didn't expect it to be this cold. And we only saw another pair of snow machiners on our way in. Doesn't surprise me. We do a lot of research and planning for trips like this because you can get in some sticky situations quickly. Um, so there's just, there's no one else out here and we've got to skedaddle before we lose our light. I don't think we have much of it left. Yes, indeed, it is cold out here. I don't even know what it is, but this has been a really fun day trip and we got, I think it was a little over 10 miles. It took us a little while to get out here. Um, there wasn't a really good broken in trail. So we we're kind of all over this valley. We made it out here. It's probably going to take us, I'm guessing like 40 minutes to get back to the truck. And then we got like a hundred miles till we get home. So we've got quite the journey ahead of us and we're going to take off.
We are working on the generator this morning. We use generators a lot up here in our cabin. This one happens to be a Honda 2200. This is what they refer to as a suitcase generator. This is our newest generator. And sadly, this is the one we are working on today. We've been having a couple problems with it. I'll get to that a little bit later. We've probably been through about five different generators in our three and a half years here in Alaska. One of them we still have, that's our Kohler generator. It's an awesome generator. We never have any problems with it. It powers our well to fill up our house and we also use it to water the garden. And all of our other issues with our other generators have always happened in winter. Winter is extremely rough on small engines. I don't think we have as many issues with bigger engines. It seems like in winter time, for some reason, these small motors just have a really hard time running. Up until about three months ago, before we got this one, we had one, it was called an AI. It's the one that Costco sells. It ran good for almost a year and then it started to get extremely loud on us. I went and returned it to Costco and instead of getting another one from them, we decided that we would get more of the top of the line generator, pretty much the best one you can get up here or so they say, and that is this one. So this is the Honda suitcase generator. And if you live somewhere warm where it didn't get well below zero, I'm sure this generator, you would have absolutely no problems with it. But in the winter time is when we need this generator the most. This is when we're always running this thing. We run it almost every single day to charge our batteries. We don't get a lot of sunlight in our solar panels. So we depend on this thing. And we've been having some issues. The main issue is the crankcase valve tube, I believe is what it's called, is actually freezing solid inside. Somewhere it's getting moisture in there and it's so cold outside that it's freezing. It's not allowing any air to get through there and it's, it's shutting off the generator. It won't run at that point. And then I'll have to bring it inside, I'll have to tear it apart, I'll have to take all the ice out of it, put it back together, I'll go outside, I'll start it again, it'll run for maybe another hour and it'll freeze again. And this isn't happening all the time, this is only happening in extreme cold you know, negative five to negative 15, negative 20 Fahrenheit is when I'm getting that freezing. So Honda, what they have is a kit that's supposed to eliminate that problem. And it's a cold weather kit. I think it's called a breather hose heater. And basically it's this little mechanism here. It hooks into the generator. It uses 10 Watts from the generator to heat that tube. It comes with a whole new tube and a bunch of insulation. And supposedly that's gonna fix the problem. So that's the first problem we're gonna be tackling on this generator today. So I've never put in one of these kits before. This part I'm doing right now, I have done before. I do this every single time that little hose freezes. You have to pull the whole air intake off of the carburetor. You have to undo the hose like that. So that's, a, that's the farthest I've taken this generator apart. So from this point forward, it's, it's a new terrain for us. And this is the hose that keeps freezing and it comes with a new hose and it's got a, it's cut in the middle. And then this is gonna kind of go in between it and it's gonna keep it heated. This is the little heater element and they got the little hoses hooked on there and it also comes with a piece of insulation. It kind of wraps around it, I guess, keeps some of the heat in there for it. We're getting there, we're almost done. Okay. So that's it, that's the cold weather kit. And recently it's been pretty warm. It's gotten all the way up to positive 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is been extremely nice. So this thing has been running great in those temperatures, but it is gonna drop back down in the next couple days, well below freezing. I think it's calling for like negative 16, negative 17. So we'll be able to test this thing out. Hopefully this fixes the problem for us. The next problem we've been having with this generator is it has a feature automatically in it where it will shut down if you're low on oil, which is great to have because you don't wanna run these things without oil. But in the cold weather, the oil is so thick in there that this machine is telling it that it has no oil in it. So it's shutting off, it won't run. I'll have to bring it inside for like a half an hour, let the oil heat up so it moves freely throughout the engine. So today we're gonna put new oil in the machine. We run 10W30 in it and 10 is the thickness of the oil. So we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna do five as the thickness. So this is 5W30. And I believe when these oils heat up, they're actually like the same thickness, but when they're cold, the 5W30 is gonna be a little bit thinner. I'm hoping that's gonna move around freely in the engine a little bit more on those really cold days and we won't have it shutting down on me. So the engine oil is extremely easy to change in these. These don't have oil filters. Uh, you just undo the oil cap where you put the oil in, you tip the machine on its side, you drain out the oil, and this thing only takes like a half a quart of oil.
Well, that officially does it for our shop kitchen and working on the generator for today. And hopefully it wasn't a mistake buying this generator. I like it when it's running good. And hopefully these things we did today will fix the problems we've been having. And we're definitely gonna be able to test this out in a few days because it is gonna get cold. We're making some crepes for breakfast. We're gonna be topping them with blueberries and rose syrup and then stuffing them with kefir cheese, kefir yogurt, and honey. They're gonna be delicious. What an incredible way to start the day. We broke our first shear bolt of the season. Hit a piece of wood or arrow did, but you pretty much need to have a box of these on hand. Well, we're removing snow today. We had a storm yesterday. 
and it brought a few inches and then we've had a few storms before then so I think we've got over a foot that we're removing and it is also the shortest day of the year. I don't think this would work that way. You want the burner? Uh, no. Too much time. I don't think I'm going to be able to use it. This bird netting has been holding up pretty well in here. We've had it for a few years now, but I like to get some of the snow off of this lean-to that we first built. Looks like it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge today though. Now. Well, another day has come and gone, and it was a short one, the shortest. And that's kind of what you get up here. You get the sun coming up. Before you know it, it has gone down, and it's still early in the day. Yeah, I think we only got about five hours of sunlight today, but it wasn't even really like a true five hours. No. And we have a lot of, a lot, a little bit more snow removal to do. It took us all day, and then we're gonna head inside and have some dinner, right? Yep. Okay, you ready?
Caught behind the Venetian blinds Had to reach for the city lines And this ain't where I belong Hey, look at me, man, what I become I've been running east Looking for sunset Okay.